Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening as we continue to focus on the ways in which God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. A reminder that if you are interested in helping to decorate the sanctuary for Easter uh, by purchasing some Easter flowers, daffodils, tulips, or lilies, the deadline for those orders is this Sunday. There are some forms available out on the welcome desk, and you can drop those with your payment in the offering plate. Uh, and on that note, a reminder that on Wednesday nights during Lent, our offerings are split between All Saints and the Madison Area Jail Ministry, a really important ministry to reach out to those who are incarcerated in the Dane County Jail. Um, the chaplains there, there's no funding for them other than the funding that we as churches in the area provide. And so invite you, uh, if you are able and interested, to uh, give towards that. Uh, you can either do that in the offering plate or you can also give electronically uh, using the QR code on the cards in your um, little pew racks. Uh, a reminder, I think most of you have been here each week, but a reminder that the words for our first song are on your bulletin uh, and for our second song you will need to turn to your hymnal for hymn number 632. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our opening litany. The prophet Isaiah proclaims that the Lord is about to do a new thing. God will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When the world feels hopelessly caught up in cycles of violence and chaos, God will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When our souls are parched and weary, God will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When it feels as though everything is lost, God will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Behold, the Lord is about to do a new thing. Let us be bold to join God in making a way out of no way. Amen. to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, he'll lead me. And rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade, but his word will still remain. He will do something new today. God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way, he works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me, he will be my God. Hold me closely to his side, with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way, he will make a way. Let us pray. 
Loving God, sometimes the path ahead is clouded by scarcity thinking. We don't have enough. We aren't good enough. What we do have to offer won't amount to much. Remind us that with you, our jars of flour and our jugs of oil will never run dry. Help us to use what we have, however small it might seem to us, trusting that in your care it is enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. A reading for this evening comes from the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rain was scarce, and because rain was scarce, food was scarce. The widow that God had appointed to take care of Elijah was planning out her last meal. She was going to go home and take the little bit of food she had left, make it for her and her son to eat, and then they would be out of food. They were going to die of starvation. Everyone had so little. What could possibly be done? And then Elijah comes on the scene, bringing a word of abundant hope. There was very little in the widow's jug and in her jar. And yet, in God's hands and with God's blessing, it was enough. Not just for a day or two, not just for one or two people, but for Elijah and the widow and her son and her whole household for many days until the Lord brought rain again upon the land. Have you ever experienced that kind of blessing of God's provision? When I fin finally gave in and went to seminary, one of my major concerns was about how I was going to afford it. I still had significant loans from undergrad, at a car payment, and I was about to give up my full-time job to be a full-time student. I wasn't sure how it was all going to work out. Work study and more student loans would help, but I still didn't see how it was all going to come together. I remember expressing that to someone at one point, and they told me that it would all be fine. It'll all work out. Money would come from the least expected places. And I remember also telling them that they must know different people than I did. <laughs> I 
didn't imagine that anyone that I knew would just be dropping extra money in my bank account while I was in seminary to help make that happen. Now, I had been fortunate to receive a couple of scholarships, and friends and family were generous as they could be, but there came a point when I got to the point where my bank account was nearly empty, and within a few days, I had a car payment to make. I really had no idea how that was going to happen <laughs> or what it would mean if my car was repossessed while I was in seminary. I did, around that time, um, went to visit my parents, and while they had been extremely generous, weren't, they were not at a point to help me with my car payment. Um, they sympathized with me, but didn't had given me everything that they had to spare to help me out. And I was really looking forward to going to church with them while I was home. It was the church that I grew up in um, from the time I was five years old. That was the church we were a part of. So there were, I had all kinds of extra grandmas who would hold my doll for me when I came to church. And um, I had also been a youth director there. And so I had all kinds of amazing relationships with people there and was just looking forward to seeing people. And I was amazed that day when I went to church that people kind of, people were glad to see me, but there were a number of people that handed me cards or notes of encouragement while I was there. And it was so uplifting for me to receive those words of encouragement, that little boost that I needed at a time when I was really struggling. What I didn't expect is that when I got home and went through those cards, there was $5 in one and $10 in another and $25 in another. Sorry, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, when I left my parents to go back to seminary, I had exactly the amount of money I needed to make my car payment. Now, you might think that after an experience like that, I might never again doubt that God would provide for me when I needed God to provide. But I am human, and so those same doubts and questions did come up for me since then. I don't know if any of those people had any idea what position I was in. Um, I don't think my parents knew before that weekend, so they are people that would have kind of spread that word, but I don't think that they knew in time to do that. It was just people offering a little bit to help me through having no idea that the little bit they gave would become the big amount that I desperately needed. We all feel at times like we have so little to offer. I'm sure none of those people, if I had gone before them and said, hey, I need somebody to help me with my car payment, I'm not sure any of those people would have sat down to write me a check for my car, the amount of my car payment. But together, the little bit that they did offer became exactly what I needed in that moment. We all, we all often feel like we don't have enough. We live in this scarcity mentality that we don't have enough time or enough resources or enough gifts. But we have seen, not just in the story of the widow at Zarephath, but in our own lives, we have seen the ways that God takes the little bits that we are able to offer and does amazing things with them. That God has created out of nothing and God can do amazing things with what we think is not enough. God can transform that into more than enough. We hear stories of that in the New Testament with the feeding of the 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish and there are 12 baskets left over. I think often, and I think this is maybe hits home, especially for us at All Saints, as we have struggled a little bit financially the past couple of years, we look at the empty space in the jar instead of what is there. There's so much to celebrate about what we have, who we are, the gifts of the people, the gifts that each of us bring. 
whatever those gifts are, whether they are time, talents, or treasures. And so I invite you to think a little bit about how we can reframe that scarcity thinking that all of us fall into, not just at church, but in our lives. How can we reframe that and help ourselves to remember that we do have a God who creates out of nothing, a God who can take just a little bit and create more than enough. I hope that as we consider that, we trust just as the widow did, even though she initially had her doubts, even if our trust is born out of desperation, that the God who fills us with abundant life will take the little bit that we have, will work with what we offer, and create a way forward again and again and again. I want to leave you with words from one of my favorite Bible passages from Ephesians. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. invite you to stand as you are able as we pray together. Trusting that God is always at work in the world in ways both obvious and hidden, we lift our prayers in confidence and hope. Holy God, you can take the smallest crumb and turn it into a feast that will feed thousands. Help us to live with a sense of abundance, trusting that you will provide a way for us to accomplish the ministry you have set before us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, 
The message that we are not enough is all around us. Help us to drown out the negative voices in our lives with words of affirmation from you, that we are yours, we are beloved, and we are enough. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, move your people to use the gifts of creativity and imagination to produce solutions to the many challenging issues we face, including climate change, hunger, violence, and wars that seem to never cease. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, we lift before you all those we know who are struggling with pain, whether mental or physical. Give them relief from their suffering and watch over all who serve in the role of caregiver. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands we commend these prayers and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When the path before you is uncertain and unclear, may you sense God's abiding presence with you always. Amen. Go in peace, trusting that God will make a way for you. Thanks be to God.